Ilio Gracie just really him and Carlos just thought it through yeah. and then were willing to test it in real competition against people much larger than them. Mm. The fact that Ilio was a small man, he wasn't a large framed man, is the reason why Brazilian Jiu Jitsu became so effective. Uh, well, Gracie Jiu Jitsu is the only Jiu Jitsu there is because my grandfather, Elio Gracie, is the one who created this leverage that I've been talking about. He was 130 pounds and he had to develop a way to use his body weight because he couldn't fight straight with anybody. So he developed ways where the guy would get tired and he would stay comfortable, and then he would take advantage of the situation after however long it may take. Because Elio had to fight off of his back. He had to tire out bigger guys first. They had to develop the, the concept of cooking your opponent. You know, all that wasn't in Japanese jiu-jitsu. Yeah. It wasn't in judo. Judo's a beautiful, elegant martial arts with fantastic technique and powerful moves, but it wasn't Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. Brazilian Hi, this is Shadi and today we will be discussing the concept of leverage or a la vanka. I've gotten this so many times on this channel up until yesterday that people are still mentioning uh, the concept of leverage and how Helio added it and that's why it is so different from judo. So uh, I'm gonna go through this just like I went through uh, my Chrome Gracie closed guard uh, video that I will link at the end and also see whether these claims hold any truth whether he added or created Alavanka and it's his favorite word uh, it is imperative in combat so on and so forth so uh, I'm not gonna approach this in this uh, you know haha I got you uh, approach or uh, mentality because that will not do good for anyone uh, practicing judo or jiu-jitsu now uh, I've been guilty of this in the past specifically when I was first starting out I've been doing this for a year and a half now so uh, I'm happy that this channel is going in the direction that it is going I've had a lot of people disagree with me from either wrestling or jiu-jitsu but the the comments and the discussions are very much uh, intellectual and I'm very happy because um, this is what Kano Sensei wanted. He believed in three types of education. Um, the physical, which we obviously all do. Um, the intellectual and also the moral. And morality is very important because if I approach someone with this haha I got you, uh, it's, either, it's both disrespectful and not intellectual. So uh, today we will do uh, three things. The first one is of course identify uh, what leverage is and it is a concept so much like uh, inside position concepts far outweigh any technique so they will be found in all the aspects of uh, the art so we're gonna go through the definition of leverage and then uh, go through it in the stand-up aspect of judo which is obviously one of the best aspect of judo and then go to the ground uh, on top and offensively and also uh, from the bottom which is defensively particularly escapes and we're gonna see if this concept is found in all of these aspects and whether or not these uh, claims hold any truth because uh, if it's only found in the guard play and bottom position then we could uh, assume that this somewhat is true but uh, if it's found in everything, then obviously these claims made by Crone and many others are obviously very faulty. So this is how we're going to examine them and go uh, through them. So uh, leverage is obviously, I'm sure you've all seen this, the, uh, the stick and the little pebble and the big rock. You have the load, which is the big rock, the fulcrum. Uh, which uh, the arm the lever arm works on it and the longer the distance between the uh, Effort and the fulcrum obviously it's going to be easier. You also have another type of fulcrum of uh, leverage Which is the effort is going up and the greater the distance the greater you will be able to carry out the, the load so one of the greatest uh, testament of leverage in stand-up judo is the Ken Ken Uchimata here demonstrated by 
the legendary and my favorite Kose in a way. So I'll walk you through this. This is from obviously the uh, fighting films DVD, the Uchimata. So uh, you have everything. You have the lever, which is uh, the leg. You have the load, which is Uke's inner thigh. Um, and the fulcrum, I would say it's actually Uke's other leg. And you want to destroy uh, the balance completely off the fulcrum. And obviously, um, the effort is Kose Inoue's Kuzushi. Here he's demonstrating that um, if he pulls it towards him like um, a normal right on right or left on left, it's not gonna work because his arms will collapse because Uke is standing in a extreme left stance. But rather, he will actually pull uh, towards Uke's forward uh, side which I will unbalance him and then go sideways rather than head on and then reaps away and then uh, the, the pull on the sleeve and the lapel will actually go down and the reaping will go up so very much like the first case of leverage that I showed of the rock and the uh, stick uh, that's and the force of the arms of the man putting down the stick in order to lift the rock up or the load in this case which is Uke's inner thigh and then you of course have uh, something that uh, Hickson and uh, all the Gracies like uh, Orion and Henner talks about which is the transference of the weight via the Ken Ken motion or the hopping because you are shifting the weight up uh, in order to truly collapse Uke also using leverage which is your technique the Ken Ken Uchimata it's a great example of how the stand-up has a lot of um, leverage you also have like the foot sweeps because um, foot sweeps you need to push and pull on sleeve and lapel and sweep the foot the other direction or sotogari is a great other example the tomoenage or the sacrifice throw all these work on the great principle now is there a throw that does not have leverage there actually is and that is the sumi otoshi or the corner drop uh, invented by uh, tenth dan kyuzo mifune here you see it it is arguably the hardest throw to pull off since there is no leverage you have to only rely on positioning and timing and of course kuzushi so this is why it's one of the hardest because there's no uh, action uh, like a in order to control the other extreme end of the lever which is Uke's body so you only have to manipulate the upper body the, the rest which is the feet is actually up to Uke via motions and of course these motions are created by your reaction that you created uh, now let's go to the ground and the first one is the top position and the greatest example of leverage is Osai Komi or pinning techniques pinning techniques are found in the old Koryus of Jujitsu. I've talked about this um, in the Tenshin Shin Uriu scrolls and here you see um, it is a great way for the little guy to pin down the bigger man. Great for self-defense, great for law enforcement. Um, you, you constantly shift your legs uh, away as a weight transference and also uh, like apply your pressure on your, on your legs in order to uh, take the load down which is your upper body on Uke's body in order to keep them down this is the second uh, how do you say it? the second principle of leverage the one I showed which is the effort is downward and in order to keep the load downward as well uh, Osai Komi is a great example of leverage uh, little men pinning uh, larger men or little women pinning larger men another great example on the ground is of course the shuji gatame where your legs and your hips are uh, i'm sorry your legs are the um, the load you push down but your hips are the fulcrum and your arms and your upper torso are uh, the effort pushing down on the lever so which will create uh, a lot of force on Uke's elbow and will eventually crush it. So, uh, Shuji Gatame is a great example of leverage in action or leverage in use. So, whether it is from the top, you know, from mount or from guard, it is the same mechanics being applied, the legs, the hips and the upper body. So, um, again, example of leverage in motion. Um, here it is before uh, it left Japan. Jujigatame was only found in Japan 
and uh, before uh, Elio Gracie found it. And finally, it is on the ground, but the bottom position, specifically the escapes demonstrated here by uh, Ninth Dan Tsunitani Oda. His contribution to the ground is arguably priceless. Here you see him bridging is actually a great way of leverage. You are pushing down with your feet, which is the um, uh, effort and you are getting your uh, head downward with your neck here for example uh, the leg the movement of the legs allowed the upper body to move upwards that is a great example of leverage here the same thing the legs uh, the movement the shifting of the weight and also the power of the legs allowed him to get back up uh, here is just a rotational force uh, of also using the legs as lever uh, so here you see leverage is found in all sorts of aspects of judo submission pinning top bottom position and of course the throwing uh with the exception of uke otoshi and sumi otoshi so uh i would say these claims are pretty much uh, faulty but nonetheless uh it is very important to examine them to grow both in information and technique and of course intellectually even if you lose a debate uh, you know that other person has taught you something because uh, Jigoro Kano says the point of a debate is not to come in to win uh, or your ego it's actually to uh, get to a common ground where both of you can leave uh, learning something new so uh, this one here, the uh, arm triangle escape is actually amazing. You can end it with a kimura. So, um, so it's very important to have these discussions to just say, you know, uh, you don't know what you're talking about and start laughing at people who say, you know, uh, whatever, like uh, here you invented leverage or uh, here you invented the guard or anything. Uh, it's always important to have a discussion. It's always important to examine the evidence it's always important to think critically uh because you know we spend most of our lives me included uh, on just age-old wisdom that turned out to not be true i'm not talking about just martial arts but everything else for so for example to everyone that practiced aikido invested years thinking it works uh, myself included yes i grew as a person uh, but you know it taught me that you know, uh, I should think more critically, I should examine things more. Uh, the only reason I didn't leave earlier because I didn't want to leave something undone and I eventually I got my black belt and this was my uh, way to go out of Aikido. I didn't want to leave something undone. I don't, I'm, I'm the kind of person that doesn't start something and just uh, quits. So if you have anything else to add, uh, please let me know down below. Also, uh, if you might want to support this work consider supporting me on patreon i have uh content that's exclusive for the patrons only um and if you are a patron head to patreon if you haven't seen any of my work so if you have anything else to add let me know down below this was shady and thank you for listening